Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the different kinds of approaches that you can fly. So we've obviously got the common ILS approach, the VORs, NDBs, RNAVs and RMP, which you've probably all heard of. But in this video, we're going to explore how they work, what their strengths and weaknesses are, and when you would use each one. Now, across the world, airports can vary wildly, their infrastructure, terrain, even the weather. But some airports boast the cutting edge satellite guidance technology and others rely on decades old technology. That's why aviation offers a complete spectrum of approaches from ground based radio beams to GPS style approaches. So we're going to unpack each one to see what makes each one unique. First up then is probably the most common and that is the ILS or instrument landing system. This is our precision approach champion. It combines two ground transmitters, one for lateral guidance, the localizer, and one for the vertical path, the glide slope. These basically put needles on your primary flight display. And when you capture the localizer and the glide slope, the FMAs in the Airbus aircraft light up LOC and GS, guiding you straight down to the runway touchdown zone. It's highly reliable, especially in low visibility, with minimums down to CAT3, meaning that you can quite often fly this approach with near zero visibility. And for a lot of aircraft, this is the only kind of approach that you can do an auto land with. But not every airport has an ILS system in place. They are very expensive to install with the equipment that is required. And in mountainous terrain, reflections can also fool the ILS needles. So while the ILS is the king at major airports, you're not going to find it everywhere. The ILS approaches are split into different categories, CAT1, CAT2 and CAT3. Also CAT3 is then split even further. And if you want to know more about this, check out the video linked on screen and in the video description explaining when to use which one. And the ILS in this video is the only precision approach that we'll be discussing. All of the rest are non-precision approaches and the idea with these is that they are to get you down close enough below the weather and the cloud base so that you can visually see the runway so you can continue to land visually. Next up then is an old school approach, the VOR approach. Now an airport will often have a VOR station somewhere on the airfield and the VOR station broadcasts a 360 degree radius around it which your aircraft can then pick up and intercept. Think of it a little bit like a bike and spokes emanating out from the center. Your aircraft can fly down one of these spokes towards the airport's runway. It's a very simple and reliable method, but you get no vertical guidance, which means if the VOR is coupled with a DME, distance measuring equipment, you would look at the charts to see at what altitude you should be a certain distance away from the VOR beacon. And because it is a non-precision approach, the minimum descent altitude, the minimums, is usually much higher than it would be for a precision approach like the ILS. This is a much cheaper installation for airports to put in, meaning that you will probably find these in areas of the world that are not quite as affluent. Next then, even older than the VOR approach is the NDB approach. The NDB is a non-directional beacon. This basically just emits an all-around signal and you would have to tune the aircraft's automatic direction finder and it will then just point towards where it is. There is no radial to select, so you literally would just point and fly, and it would then take you to wherever the NDB is located. Now, these approaches are seldom flown nowadays as we obviously have modern technology, so these are being phased out. Personally, I can't remember the last time I ever flew one of these or even had need to, because even with remote airfields, VORs are usually the way to go. Speaking of technology then, enter the RNAV approach, the area navigation which basically uses GPS and your aircraft's flight management system so instead of flying using beacons or beams from the airport's runway you fly between waypoints programmed into your flight management computer and these waypoints are basically just points in space GPS coordinates with LNAV or lateral navigation you get lateral guidance and for most of these approaches you also get VNAV as well vertical guidance that's given you both lateral and vertical guidance meaning it is very similar to how an ILS approach would operate 
But as these are just random GPS points in space, then it is still not considered a precision approach, even though it is pretty close. Even the minimum descent altitudes can be similar to that of ILS approaches. And the RNAV's biggest strength is how flexible it is. So whether you are landing at a remote airport or around mountainous terrain, as long as you've got a healthy GPS signal, then RNAVs are the way to go for a lot of airports. But remember, again, it's only designed to get you down below the cloud base, low enough to see the runway so you can land. You cannot perform an auto land with an RNAV approach. Finally, then we can take the RNAV to the next level, and that then becomes the RNP approach. You may have seen on the chart sometimes RNAV RMP. Well, RNP is the upgraded version. It stands for Required Navigation Performance, basically RNAV Plus. The RNP approach then mandates onboard monitoring and alerts, guaranteeing that the aircraft stays within a tight tolerance of the given track, often 0.1 nautical miles. This kind of precision allows a curved radius to fix segments, letting you thread the approach through canyons or mountainous areas, or keeping noise sensitive cities happy. However, because of the tight tolerances and onboard checks, crews and operators both need special approval. When it's available, the RMP can lower your minimums down to as little as 100 feet above the ground. And the RMP approach is quickly becoming more and more common, replacing the standard RNAV approaches. And furthermore, some airports are now offering RNP AR approaches. Now, the AR just stands for Authorization Required, and these push the RMP's precision even further. These approaches usually feature complex, tight curved segments and demand onboard performance monitoring plus special regulatory and operator approval. Minimums can go really low, even in challenging terrain. And here in Europe, you can find these kinds of approaches in Innsbruck and Funchal, drastically reducing the pilot's workload for these approaches. Now, in terms of how to fly these approaches, each one probably deserves its own video itself. If you'd like to see that, then let me know in the comments down below. But I would love to hear from you guys if you have a favorite kind of approach or even a favorite approach to any specific airport. Personally, I do like the RNP AR approaches. The workload reduction you get from these is great, particularly when flying into airports like Madeira and things like that. But there are, of course, other kinds of approaches which we've not touched on. Non instrumental approaches, which are basically visual approaches or circle to land approaches. Again, we do have video tutorials on those here on the channel, so do check those out. If you do have any questions following anything we've spoken about in this video, then please leave a comment down below. And if you've enjoyed the video as well, please don't forget to leave a like. And of course, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our future videos and of course, live streams. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again in our next one. Bye bye for now.